What is up everybody? Coming at you today with my top 10 tips for catching fall catfish. So let's get started. Number one is that fall is a transition period. Heard me talk about that a lot in my videos in the past and anytime you're dealing with a transition period, rapidly warming or rapidly cooling water temperatures, fishing can be tough. The fish can scatter and they can change from day to day or even within a day and move into different patterns. So you have to think outside the box, you have to look lots of different places and sometimes try some different techniques that you wouldn't normally try. So be prepared, especially when the temperatures are changing daily or dropping considerably to do some searching to find and stay in the catfish. Number two is to be prepared for the fall turnover. You get that thermocline in lakes and reservoirs that don't have any current in them in the summer months. You have a layer of water down on the bottom that doesn't have any oxygen in it. Well, the fall turnover is when that layer of water on the bottom below the thermocline mixes back in with the rest of the water. You'll get on the water, a lot of times it'll be kind of a nasty brown chocolate milk color. You'll see lots of little debris and stuff floating on the top of the water and it usually has a really foul smell to it. Last about a week to 10 days in most cases, sometimes a little less, but the fishing can be really, really tough during the turnover. Sometimes it's best just to stay home when the lake starts turning over. You can still catch some fish, but visibility is really low and they can't smell really well during that turnover as well because there's so much stuff in the water. Now in the fall, a lot of people think that they have to go deep to catch catfish and that couldn't be further from the truth. So a lot of people want to default to fish in deep water in the fall and winter. They think that's the only place to catch catfish or the best place. But the truth is you can still find catfish in shallow water and in mid depths in the fall. So don't be afraid to try those mid depths and that shallower water. I catch catfish up as shallow as two and three feet of water during the fall at times and can still catch fish out in deep water. Number four is to look for the magic depth. I talk about this in a lot of my videos. That magic depth is when you get out there and you find the vast majority of the bait and the vast majority of the fish in a certain depth of water. You get out there, use that sonar, scan different depths, and typically what you'll find is you'll find a certain depth that's got the vast majority of the fish and the vast majority of the bait, and that's the magic depth but things are a little bit different in transition periods. The magic depth is always a great place to start, but what you'll often find during transition periods is you'll find big groups of fish that are just outside that magic depth. So don't be afraid to look just a little bit deeper or a little bit shallower when you see the vast majority of that biology in a certain depth. Sometimes the fishing can be far better just a little deeper or a little shallower than that magic depth during the transition period. Number five is you may see big changes from the morning to the evening or throughout a day. And this is especially true if you have an area like I live in here in Texas, where in the fall it may be you know, 40 or 50 degrees in the morning sometimes, and it may warm up to 80 degrees in the afternoon. And those fish will often make big moves throughout the day when you have big weather changes like that. So a lot of other factors to that, but the most basic form is if you have big changes in weather pattern, you have cold mornings and warm afternoons, you want to start and look at different depths because you may find fish deep in the morning, shallow in the afternoon, or in mid depths in the morning and shallow in the afternoon. There's all sorts of changes throughout the day when you have warm mornings, cold mornings, when you have cold mornings and warmer afternoons. So don't be afraid to look in vastly different water depths and conditions than where you started when you see those big changes in the weather throughout the day. 
Next is to drift fish. Anytime you have a transition period, I like to drift fish. Now that doesn't mean that you can only catch fish drifting, but when you have scattered fish and fish that are moving around a lot and moving quickly, drifting is a great way to catch them. When you get out in that magic depth or a little deeper, a little shallower, how much anywhere you, you find fish and how scattered out in a certain uh, depth, that that's a great out. place a to drift or pull planter boards through those fish. fish and is typically a way more productive way to target those scattered fish than trying to sit on anchor and waiting for those fish to come to you. Now, anytime you have these transition periods where you're seeing big changes in water temperature, and the water is cooling off or warming up rapidly, you'll see the cooling in the fall transition period and the warming in the spring transition period. One place that I really like to hone in on fish is any sort of major transition area. So anytime you have a big break from shallow water to deeper water, where it drops off, whether it's a point, a hump, a ledge, the edge of a mud flat, any sort of transition area like that where there's a very clear and drastic break in the water uh, depth. So going from deep to shallow, shallow to deep, whichever way you wanna look at it, those are great places to find catfish during transition periods. Now another favorite during transition periods, especially this water's these fall good, transition good periods, good warm, so he's nice and feisty. Flats. Oh yeah, that's Doesn't a good matter fish. If they're deep, shallow, or mid depths, but anytime you've got big, expansive mud flats, you'll these typically big cat find fish or good catch numbers big cat of catfish fish. on How those mud it? flats during these transition periods as well. Now next is one of those things that I've said a lot about different times of the year, and it's especially true in the fall. The bird is the word. It's like that old song, everybody's heard about the bird, you know, if you youngsters don't know it, go look it up. Uh, but birds can do a lot to help you locate fish during transition periods, and this is especially true of the fall transition period. It doesn't matter if you're looking for pelicans or gulls that are scanning up above looking for bait fish. Uh, if you're looking for uh, egrets or herons or any other kind of fish standing up on the shoreline, egrets or herons or any other fish standing up on the shoreline, or fishing cormorant roost like I've talked about some in the past as well. Anytime you find birds during the transition period, it's a great way to help you hone in on where those fish are because those birds are usually close to the fish or close to the bait. Now another trick to catching catfish in the fall, and this is often highly debated, but I'm going to tell you that it's 100% true. Flathead catfish feed heavily in the fall. When it starts to cool off and those water temperatures start to drop, those flathead catfish start to eat and they eat heavy. And that is the most productive time I have ever had for finding and catching flathead catfish. If you can locate those flathead runs in the fall and sit up on them, you can usually do really well catching the flathead catfish night or day. These fish will feed real heavily. My theory has always been that they're feeding heavily and put an extra weight on because they're such a dormant fish in the winter. They don't really move around a whole lot. Uh, it can be really, really difficult to catch in cold water. And I think that they bulk up and eat really, really heavily and put that extra weight on before the cold water period starts in the winter time. But the late fall, mid fall, late October kind of time frame is often an epic time for catching flathead catfish. And that brings me into another tip, which is to go slow. When water cools off, the colder it gets, the more the fish's metabolism will slow down. And when that metabolism slows down, the fish are not as aggressive, they don't move around as much, and they won't chase baits as much. The colder it gets, the more important that becomes. So when you start to see water temperatures drop in the fall, especially as you start to get down into the 50s or so, the lower that water temperature goes, the more those fish will slow down. If you're gonna drift, 
you got to slow that drift speed way down. It's possible to catch fish drifting or dragging baits really fast when the water's hot, but they will not chase baits when it's cold. So slow that drift speed down, slow that troll speed down. The colder the water gets, the slower you want to go, and you'll get more bites and catch more catfish that way. Now, last but not least is to find the bait, find the fish, but this can be a little bit confusing. I talked about transition areas. I talked about that magic depth and looking a little bit deeper or a little bit shallower than that magic depth, but finding the bait, finding the fish is true year round, but in the fall, things can be a little bit strange. And one thing to be aware of is to use that side imaging. Bump that side scan range on your fish finder out a little bit further than you normally would and really pay attention to what you're seeing on there. A lot of times when you get out on these mud flats and you start scanning and you start seeing pods of catfish out on these mud flats or in these depths where you're not necessarily marking tons of bait fish, what you'll see on that side imaging is really, really large and dense balls of bait. And that's what those catfish are often chasing on those mud flats. So use that side imaging to your advantage, bump that scan range out there, turn your, <clears throat> so use that side imaging to your advantage, bump that scan range out and scan a large path of water when you're scanning and turn that frequency on that transducer down to 455. That gives you a much wider cone and you may be surprised at what you'll see. So that's it. Those are my top tips for catching more fall catfish. Doesn't matter if you fish for blues, channels, or flatheads. There's some tips in there for you. This is one of my favorite times to catch fish. I love fishing fall and winter. As soon as the water temperature gets down into the mid 60s or so, man, if I could only fish fall and winter, I would love to do that because it is absolutely hands down my favorite time. The fishing is great catch tons of fish, catch tons of big fish. There's not a bunch of jet skis and wake boats and any of that other stuff. I got an emergency weather alert going on my phone. We got bad weather coming in. You don't have all the yahoos on the jet skis and the wakeboards and all that other stuff, and it is a great time to catch catfish. So stay tuned for some upcoming tips, trips, and information, including on the water action videos for some fall and winter catfishing action. Until next time, I'm Chad Ferguson, catfishedge.com.